I now call uh, Jerome Mayhew. we've all heard it before. We've, not only have we all heard it before, but we've all said it before. <laughs> all said it before. So I'm going to try, try, I may fail, but I'm going to try not to do that. Um, I do have to highlight some elements of the problem, but although it's been ably um, covered by the Honourable Member for Waveney, access to NHS dentistry, specifically in Norfolk, the worst part of the east of England, was uh, surveyed in 2020 to 2021 and of the 150 sub-regions of the, of the country, Norfolk came 147th for access to NHS dentistry. And as I've uh, said to this minister in a previous speech, you only have to follow the money. Because as the Honourable Member for Waveney has already pointed out, the best areas spend nearly £80 per mouth per year on dentistry. The east of England it's £39, fully 50% um, less. And one of the questions I, I ask of the minister is, does he have an explanation for that? Because I genuinely struggle to understand how it is that the East of England's spending on NHS dentistry is so much below the rest of the country. There's, it does seem to be without currently an explanation. And then taking it to Broadland, more, more locally still, the lack of dentists, dentists of any description, is really profound. I was lucky enough to persuade the, um, the department to advertise, to create a new contract for dentistry, NHS dentistry, in Fakenham last year. And that, uh, so the money was available, and they advertised. Not a single person, not a single organisation, to Mark applied uh, for that contract, and it's still vacant. Uh, the Honourable Member for North Norfolk, who is unable to speak in this debate, he has in his constituency a dental practice in Sheringham, uh, which is owned by an organisation that has an equivalent practice in London. That organisation has been advertising consistently for a new private dentist in Sheringham for 10 years, and they have yet to have that role filled, whereas during the same time, multiple positions in their London uh, practice have been advertised and have been filled. So it's not just a regional issue, it's you know, geography really matters. Yeah. Geography really matters here. Yeah. And I'm sorry to say just last week, the latest in a long and ignoble line of announcements uh, came about when Brundle Dental Practice, which is an NHS practice, contacted their current uh, uh, patients and said from the 1st of September this year they will no longer be accepting adult patients for the NHS and people are being asked to, to move on to monthly subscriptions uh, working out between 150 and 400 pounds a year for dental care. And I'm struggling to know what to say to those constituents of mine, many of whom have contacted me, because not a single NHS practice in the county of Norfolk is currently accepting new patients under their NHS contract. And you can say, well, at £11 a month, although that's only for checkups, that's only for hygienists, it's not for actually for dental care, that's an extra charge. You can say that many people can afford, if they have to, to pay for dentistry. But within that number, you have to also ex uh, consider those who are excluded from paying dental charges because of their financial circumstances. What are we asking of those constituents where are they to turn to when there is not a single provider in the county of Norfolk accepting NHS dentistry? The answer, of course, is that they'll go to the Norfolk and Norwich. They'll go to the, the university hospital when their, when their dental problems become acute. And we merely transfer from the dentistry budget into the NHS and acute budget the problem, which is going to be so much worse and so much harder and more expensive to treat because we're not nipping things in the bud. We're dealing with acute emergencies um, and it, it cannot be the right answer. Now, the reason why I didn't want to prolong the agony of discussing what the problem is, is because I know this minister gets it. He's, he's, if he wasn't educated before, he's certainly been educated by many members in this room, and, uh, either here or in the main chamber, uh, on numerous occasions, but, he, but it's already been fed back. Uh, we on this side have great confidence in the minister 
in his grip and grasp and focus on this issue. And we know that there is a dental plan, dentistry plan, that is imminent. Um, obviously, the sooner it's published, the better, and more power to the minister's elbow. But there are, if I may, uh, a number of suggestions which I hope will find their way into that plan. Uh, so, we, in the short term, f additional contractual improvements to the current dentistry contract. Um, other members have spoken eloquently on this, so I, I highlight that as being very important. But in the medium term, we've, we've had reference to centres for dental development. Uh, there's the University of Suffolk, who have uh, uh, far progressed in their application. There's also a necessity for a similar uh, venture for the University of East Anglia, or at least um, work, similar work for that in Norwich. But in the long term, we simply have to train more dentists. We have to open this market to allow people to, to access what is a lucrative and fulfilling career that, that currently is not being expressed in the east of England and in Norfolk in particular. And we do need to train in the east. The University of East Anglia has put forward proposals for a dental school. And we know from the medical school that they uh, founded about 10 years ago that what, because they survey all of their graduates each year, they know definitively that about 40% of the graduates of the medical school in Norwich go on to take their first job locally. That single act of setting up a medical school, a, a dental school, forgive me, in Norwich, linked to uh, the Quadrum Institute and the, the, um, the research work um, at the Norwich Research Park with the, the um, human biome, these are, that, would, that is the long-term solution. And so I hope that the, the medical plan will look beyond the national numbers, where I was told by the NHS that they think roughly the right number of dentists are being trained uh, each year. I dispute that because it's been seven years since they've actually surveyed what those dentists are up to. They have no idea, Sir Mark, whether those dentists which are notionally on their books have retired, gone abroad, or work in the NHS, working part-time in the NHS, working privately, or none of the above. Well, my honourable friend, uh, yes, I would give, give, give way. I'm very grateful, and he's making a powerful point about the link between where people train and where they work. I would just gently, uh, through him to the minister, make the point that East of England is quite a large area, mm. and uh, Norfolk and Suffolk are deeply wonderful places, which are, which are a great affiliation, <laughs> but they are Stop quite that. a long way from Bedfordshire, yeah. which is also <laughs> in the East of England. Yeah. So if we were to think that job done by training all these dentists in Norwich or wherever, um, I want to know what that's going to mean for the good people of uh, Leighton Buzzard, Dunstable, Hatton Regis and the surrounding villages. So I would just sort of put that marker on the minister's <laughs> mind through him. Well, I, I think that's fair enough. It, it, it is the case, however, that if you wish to, if you grow up in the East of England, whether it's in Norfolk Suburb or even Bedfordshire, there are only two places where you can train. One is Birmingham and the other one's London. There is no other place in the entire east of England where you can train. So is it surprising that we have a dearth of dentists? Is it surprising, particularly in rural areas, that we don't attract dentists who are newly qualified, therefore likely to be in their early mid-twenties? Do they wish at that stage, in large numbers, to relocate to a rural location? Many do not. So we need to, we need to bring the beauties of East Anglia, including Bedfordshire, to trainees and that we can, we can benefit from the stickiness of uh, tertiary education and location. And then finally, there's another point which um, the Honourable Member for Waveney raised, and I, I wanted to just develop a little bit, and that is fluoridation. There is no fluoridation in Norfolk at the moment. And perhaps it shows, because when looking at the data, it's not universal. The level of decay across uh, the teeth of Norfolk is not universal. It is substantially located towards the west, West Norfolk and King's Lynn. Now, there are all sorts of factors which may go into account for that. But I do notice that if you look at uh, areas of higher dental decay, they correlate with areas which have reduced natural levels of fluoridation in the water. The, the, the lowest levels of fluoridation naturally occurring in the water in Norfolk is around King's Lynn. So I just raise that as an issue that I hope the plan will address.